healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. It's Megan Reed with another great segment of the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Word of God and soul-stirring encouragement from churches, pastors, and choirs from all over the country. And today is no different. Check out this inspiring sermon from one of the church community's most dynamic pastors. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Walk in the Word with Benevolent Faith Ministries, the show where we provide biblical interpretation that engages the words of the text, the context behind the text, and yes, the application for us all beyond the text. And today, my friends, we want to speak from the subject, all in the family, all in the family. And our topic of discussion today centers around the text of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 10 to 13. I'm going to read this from the New American Standard Bible version. And the Lord's word reads as follows. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. And yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And essentially, y'all, in this text, the Apostle John is telling us that there's only one way of entrance into the family of God. And that's by being born into that family, or should I say, by being reborn into that family. Now, from an earthly standpoint, we know that entrance into any family comes by physical birth or physical adoption. But from a heavenly standpoint, we know that entrance into the heavenly family is only made possible by the miracle of spiritual birth, a second birth, if you will, or a birth from above or spiritual adoption. And Jesus put it this way in the Gospel of John, chapter three, verses three to eight, when he said, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from, or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the spirit. Saints of God, we need to recognize just how wonderful and amazing that it is that some wretched, trifling, sinful people like ourselves can actually become children of the most high God. But here's where most people get this twisted, okay? Follow me here. Because they would say, okay, wait a minute, Pastor Rob. Aren't we all already children of God? Like, aren't all people everywhere God's children? 
Ain't God the father of us all? Well, from a crea creatorial standpoint, meaning from the standpoint that God created us all, you could say that, yeah, he is our father and we are his children. And scripture backs this up. Look at Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Are we not all children of the same father? Are we not all created by the same God? Then why do we betray each other, violating the covenant of our ancestors? Look at Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and exist, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. So yeah, from the standpoint that God created us all, technically, yeah, that makes him everybody's father. But you know how you can be a father and not really be a father to that child. So take a look at the next two passages of scripture that we want to point out, which is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Look at that. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. The same way a man can make a baby that don't necessarily make him a father unless he actually accepts the child and cares for the child and loves the child. You're a father in name only. You don't show up for the kid. You don't do anything for the kid. They call you a deadbeat. God's not a deadbeat dad. So there are conditions and restrictions upon calling him father. We just read that. And that was in the Gospel of John, where Jesus was saying, look, you're reborn. Not a physical rebirth, a physical birth, not the result of two people having intercourse. That's not it. It's a birth that comes from God. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Boom, there it is. Just because God created us all, don't make him the father of us all. But you are inherited into the family of God through your faith in Christ. That's the difference. That's the determining factor. So according to those two verses we just read, John chapter 1, verse 12, and Galatians 3, verse 26, we discover that there is far, there is a far more intimate relationship that we need to enter into and into which we are actually invited. Where in a spiritual sense, we get to know God as our loving heavenly father. So it's the relationship we enter into with him that's more intimate than just saying, yeah, God created us. See the difference? That's like the deadbeat. Just cause you made the kid, you don't have an intimate relationship with him. Who cares if you made them? You're not acting like a father. So once we become followers of Christ, once we put our faith in God's son, that alone adopts us into the family. In other words, as followers of Christ, we can only be children of God because we have, quote, put our faith in Christ, as Galatians 3.26 just told us. And this leads to our next important question, my friends, which is, okay, well, how then do we become children of God? Well, we can only become children of God by the same process by which we became children of our earthly parents. That is by birth. Look again, John first, uh, uh, John chapter 1, verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Listen, nobody ever became a child without being 
born a child. And no one ever becomes a member of God's family without being born into that family. So how then is one born into the family of God? Well, notice from the text of John chapter 1, verse 13, that there are three negatives. You're like, what you mean? Follow me on this. The first negative is that it is not of blood. And some translations say not of natural descent. That means that the birth that's spoken of here is not the result of human generation. Meaning it's not a birth, like I said before, it's not a birth that came from human reproduction. It's not that type of birth. In other words, we do not inherit membership into the family of God. See, we inherit a lot of stuff from our parents, okay? We inherit our parents' natures. We inherit their personalities. And sometimes we even inherit their features. You know what I'm saying? People be like, oh, you got your mother's eyes. Or, oh, you got your father's profile, which people tell me all the time, which I really do have my dad's profile, maybe rest in peace. But there's one thing that we do not inherit from our parents, my friends, and that is spiritual grace. In other words, Christian parents do not automatically produce Christian children. It's not of natural descent. Just because you and your spouse are both saved, when y'all have a kid, the kid don't just come out automatically saved. You understand what I'm saying? The kid has to grow up and understand and come to the knowledge of who Christ is and then accept Christ as their Lord and Savior through their own volition, through their own choice. They don't just automatically start following Christ because they were born into a Christian family. So that's what that's saying when it says not of blood, okay? Remember, we're talking about three negatives in first in John chapter 1, verse 13. So the first is not of blood. That's the first negative. Here's the second one, which is that it is, quote, not of the will of the flesh. And other translations say not of human decision. In other words, no person can make himself a child of God by any amount of self-determination or self-effort. You can make yourself a doctor, go to school, study hard, pass your boards, you become a doctor. You can make yourself a pastor, go to school, get your degree, get your doctorate, whatever. You can make yourself certain things. You can't make yourself a child of God. No amount or, or no amount of decision or resolution on our part will make us members of God's family. Think of it like this. Suppose you wanted to become a child of affluence or fame, that you wanted to become a child of a rich or a famous family. You can't just roll up talking about, yeah, I'm tired of being unknown. So I'm officially declaring myself a member of the Warren Buffett family now. I'm officially declaring myself a member of the Bill Gates family now. You can try that if you want. You roll up on Bill, uh, Bill Gates or Warren Buffett's family reunion if you want. This ain't poetic justice, bro. They're going to be looking at you sideways like, who this is? Security, come get this guy. You can't just unilaterally make that decision on your own. Hey, I'm about to start being part of their family from a, from a monetary standpoint. And then from a fame standpoint, you can't just be like, you know what? I'm tired of being a nobody. I officially declare myself a member of the Jackson family. I'm down with Michael and Janet now. Me and Tito is cool. We're going to Starbucks after this. Don't work that way. I'm declaring myself a member of Michael Jordan's family. That's my daddy. My daddy is the greatest player of all time. Don't work that way, y'all. You see what I'm saying? You can't just declare yourself a member of those families simply because you want to. 
because it's, quote, not of human decision. So you see that? So the first negative is that it's not of blood. And the second negative is that it's not of the will of the flesh. Thirdly, from the text, we can see that it's not of the will of man. In other words, no man can make anyone a child of God. <laughs> There's not a human alive who can will such a thing into existence. I mean, to be sure, let's not get it twisted. There are plenty of good men and women that can do a great many things to help us. Just think of how awesome it is, for example, to have Christian parents and friends who are concerned about our spiritual welfare. However, don't miss this, no amount of care or concern from even the most saintly, saved and righteous man or woman can produce within us a spiritual rebirth. Only God can do that. Like I said before, men can give you titles. They can declare you this and that. Remember how the, the queen, she would knight, I knight the royal Sir Duke of Ellington or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, they can do that. But a queen's not going to be able to knight you. I knight you a son or daughter of the most high. That's not her right. That's not her place. And she don't have the power to do that. Only God does. So those, my friends, are the three negatives that we see in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 13. Now, notice from that verse that there is at least one positive statement which addresses the question of how can I be born into God's family. And that's found in the statement which tells us that we must be, quote, born of God. We've got to be born of God. Don't get it twisted. Make no mistake. Only God can make me a child in his family. It's his work and his work alone. Think of it like this. You want to adopt a kid, right? So you go to child services and you go through all the process. You got to go to court, family court. You got to fill out the paperwork. You got to go through background checks. You got to do all these things before you can adopt that child. If you don't do those things, that adoption is not considered legal and it's not considered legitimate. It's the same premise here. Unless you go through God, and the only way to get to God is through Christ. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So unless you go through Christ to get to God, you ain't adopted into the family, bro. See, people really, and we said this earlier, people really have a problem. They struggle with that. But we're all God's children. We're all God's children. You know what makes you not God's child, one of God's children? You don't listen to nothing he says. <laughs> How are you going to call yourself a child of God and you out here being worldly and you following the realm of Satan instead of the realm of God? Let's say you have a kid, okay? And like I said, you don't act like a parent to them and they don't treat you like a parent. You're a parent name only. You're not an actual real parent. Now, I'm not saying God isn't a real parent, but he's not a real parent. If you out there being worldly, don't call him your father because he's not. And he's going to be like, I don't know you. And Jesus even said that. You'll get to heaven. He's going to be like, get out of here. Go and get up down with that fire pit because I don't know you. You lived your whole life as if you didn't know me. And now you get here and you want to claim how much you love me? Get out of here. So just because you're the dad, in name, don't make it that. <laughs> and that brings us 
to our final point today, my friends, which is that we are only born into God's family by a supernatural act of God. Only a supernatural act of God places us in the family lineage. lineage. Only a supernatural act of God will allow you to come to the family reunion. But in order for us to access that supernatural power of God, we've got to first meet two conditions. In other words, God will make us his children only when we first meet certain qualifications that he's already laid out. What are those, you ask? Well, we can see them in the verse before, the previous verse. Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Essentially, what that verse is telling us, y'all, is that we've got to, number one, receive the Lord Jesus. And number two, believe in his name. So let's examine this first condition, which says that we have to, quote, believe in his name. Well, let's examine the second one first. It says we have to believe in his name. What does that mean exactly, believe in his name? Well, to believe in his name means to place your faith and trust in who he says he is in scripture. That being the Messiah, the son of, the, the son of God, God in the flesh. You have to face your, place your faith in that. He told you that's who he was. If you can't believe that, you're like, I don't know about all that. Then you can't believe in his name. To believe in his name means to believe that he is all he claims to be, which is the Savior and the Lord of his people. See, we got to understand, y'all, the name of Jesus stands for his person and his work and the word of God informs us that first and foremost, he is the savior of all those who trust him and belong to him. Look at Matthew chapter one, verse 21. And she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Look at Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. I mean, think of it like this, okay? You can't believe in something if you don't first accept it's truth. If you don't first have confidence or faith or trust in its existence and value. Like, if you don't believe in the value of exercise, for example, if you don't believe in the existence of the health benefits associated with exercising, then yeah, you're not going to exercise. You ain't going nowhere near a gym. You're going to act like you're allergic to the gym. You have to first have a belief that exercise is good for you. It's the same premise. You can't believe in the power of Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in his protections, in his promises. You can't believe in that stuff if you don't believe in him. That doesn't make sense. And that's what happens with too many people these days. They don't believe in him, but they claim they believe in God. Oh, I don't believe in Jesus, but yeah, I'm, I, I believe in God. I'm spiritual. Oh, man, you hear that all the time, don't you? I'm spiritual. 
Especially when somebody asks them, you go to church? You believe in the Lord? Well, I'm spiritual. That's an excuse saying, no, I don't like going to church. No, nah, I don't want to follow the mandates of Christ because he going to have me doing stuff that I like doing. He going to tell me not to do that stuff. I ain't with that. I enjoy doing worldly sinful stuff. So when Jesus tells me not to do it, I can't follow him. But I follow the Lord. Why? Because I'm a good person. That's not enough, yo. And I'm telling you right now, being a good person is not what gets you into heaven. Why should I let you into my heaven? Why should I let you through my gates? Because I was a good person. Right. Wrong answer. You know what the right answer is? Because I believed in your son that my salvation came through him and him alone, that without my relationship with him, you hated me, Lord. Which is true. We're enemies of God without Christ. So, you got to have that belief. But verse 12 tells us that we don't only have to believe in his name to become children of God. We also have to receive the Lord Jesus into our hearts and our lives. So in order to receive Jesus, you have to first accept him. And you can't accept him if you don't first get to know him. Go back to the deadbeat dad analogy. How are you going to accept this guy as your father if you don't get to know him? He's just your dad in name only. But if he never came around and never got to know you, most of the time, those kids are going to be like, I don't know my biological father, and I don't want to. He didn't bother with me, so I ain't going to bother with him. It's the same premise. you got to get to know him in order to accept him. Think of it like this. Before somebody is allowed to come into your house, you have to have some level of familiarity with them, right? I mean, nobody opens up their home to a complete stranger. You don't know nothing about that person. They might be a serial killer. You're not just going to be like, oh, yeah, come on in. Listen, I got to go to the store. Make yourself at home. Who does that? Now, you got a good heart if you do that, but you also may be a little bit naive because that's not the move, okay? It's the same premise here, y'all. Before Jesus can come into your heart, you have to first accept him by getting familiar with who he is. In other words, you have to take him, you have to accept him, and you have to welcome him. Revelation 3, verse 20. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. I say this all the time in our online service. Don't let Jesus be standing on the porch knocking and you looking to the people like, who that is? I don't recognize that. You turning off the porch like acting like you ain't home. Don't do that. Don't do that to Jesus, okay? Saints of God, if we are to truly grow up spiritually, then it is vitally important that we make quite sure that we really have been... Church family, I pray that you were uplifted by those words. If you would like to find out more about today's pastor and listen to his full sermon, simply click the link. Remember to follow us on social media to keep up with more great sermons and messages we broadcast throughout the day, week, and month. I'm Megan Reed with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.